Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this walkthrough and first impressions of the Wise Dog Tarot. This is a deck by MJ Coolinane. This was an Indiegogo deck that I backed. I'm very late to the game on this, but I still want to share my walkthrough and first impressions because I haven't worked with this deck yet because I've been waiting to film my walkthrough. So I'm definitely going to take you through all 78 cards, but you should know up front that this deck I believe is currently out of print. I don't know if she plans to reprint it, but I did want to share it with you guys. You may recognize MJ Coolinane's work from her Crow Tarot, which was quite popular and got picked up by US Games. This is the independent version of the Wise Dog, so I've, I've not heard any rumors about whether or not this has been picked up by any kind of mass market, but I love dogs, so I needed at least one good dog deck in my collection, and this one was the one I was the most drawn to. I love that she signed the box here, so we're going to dive in. I also love that I have this like paw print tarot bag for it that Peggy made me. But with that said, let's dive in. It is in a two-part um, box. It's not super firm fit, but it also doesn't have any thumb cutouts on the sides, so I'm pretty glad that it's a little bit looser of a fit, but just keep in mind if you're somebody that, um, like, you wouldn't want to turn it upside down, the lid would probably, yeah, it would definitely come off. Um, so just keep that in mind. And there is some extra room in the box, which I was a little bit... Um, I found that unexpected. It doesn't hurt anything, so that's fine. And I've kept here the uh, mjcoolinane.com website. Now, um, MJ has also uh, created the Grimalkin Tarot. I don't know if that's finished yet, but I believe she was also funding that through Indiegogo, and that is the Cat Tarot. So she created the Crow Tarot, the Wise Dog Tarot, and now the Grimalkin Cat Tarot. So that is her card. Put that there and we'll put that there for now. The guidebook that comes with this is a fairly thin um, little white book. It doesn't look like it has a ton of information in it um, with some black and white photos of the doggos. We'll take a pic peek at this um, after I've drawn a sample card for us but for now let's take a look at the cards. So the the box is nice and sturdy as I mentioned and the cardstock for these feels like a three 10 GSM. The backings have this dog on the back and they are reversible. I don't often mention that in my reviews because I don't read with reversals most of the time. This cardstock does feel pretty thin but it feels like it'll hold up just fine and it feels like it'll probably shuffle well but it is pretty thin so if that matters to you keep that in mind but it doesn't feel not like it feels sturdy enough and I think it'll hold up fine. They do have a bit of a border around them as you can see here, but it's kind of like a parchment color. This is sort of a collage style deck, and I know that in the Indiegogo campaign she was accepting, there was a tier level where you could have your dog in, I believe, the Minor Arcana. Um, so a lot of these dogs were submitted by people that were in the crowdfunding campaign to one degree or another. I think the majors may have already been done by her before then. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, um, but I just really like her art style and I think it works really well in a dog deck and I love that these dogs do have their own individual stories and, and, and personalities and things like that. I don't necessarily believe that, I'm just checking because I don't think, I don't think these individual dog stories made it into the guidebook at all. I do think that's a bit of a miss in a way. I think that that could have made, been a really cool touch to have a bit of a meteor guidebook and to have the dogs that were submitted to have a little bit about them featured in the guidebook. But we'll see. I haven't like looked at it with any detail yet. So I'll set that aside there. Let's zoom in and we'll take a look at the cards. I'm going to have a pop sound in a second while I have a drink of my soda. <laughs> There we go. We have a soda stream now, so making my own ginger ale has been pretty awesome. I mean, not from scratch, but still tasty. So we're going to start. I'm going to zoom this up just a bit so I can still pick up the card, because for some reason I've been liking being able to do that lately. So I'm going to have this partially zoomed in, and then I'll bring it in the rest of the way. So we have our fool here. Very cute little, I think maybe a Jack Russell. Super adorable, going after a butterfly, about to fall in the water. There's a little snake here, so there's definitely a need for caution, and he's being a little careless. Perfect fool energy, I think. This magician. 
What's neat about this is that we have actually um, a person's hand sort of holding and the dog sort of resting in her hand or his hand and we have a hand represented here. I think hands are really excellent symbols for the magician because of course it's about having everything you already need, everything is contained within you and I think this really speaks to the way that dogs sort of hold that complete energy for us. Very regal high priestess here with Kali. And I really just love the art. There's something about this art, the crescent moon. It's just really beautifully done. The empress, and of course we have a mama with her babies, or puppies. Love the Doberman for the emperor. I think that's really fantastic. And the Hierophant here, we get the idea of an age, an older dog. We also have a fox um, and this, these running dogs behind. But with the fox here in the image as well, you do get this idea of lineage. You sort of like the wild dog's history, the domestic dog, the fox. And it kind of makes you think about that lineage when it comes to dogs um, and pull that energy in, that idea of uh, tradition. The pack here, too, in the back makes me think of how with dogs' behavior, I was just thinking as a, before I put the card away here, I want to mention it, makes you think of with dogs' behavior, part of their tradition, where that shows up, obviously, in dogs is their, their pack mentality, is the way they look for an alpha, that sort of thing. Um, the lovers. Look at these sweet doggos. I'm not entirely sure of that breed. I want to say Chow or Basenji. I don't think Chow. I don't think they come in that color. But again, I, I wish the breeds were in the guidebook, and I don't think they are, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll double check. I could be wrong. The Chariot. This is so great with the sled dogs here. There are Siberian Huskies. Um, there might be another kind of dog. I'm not perfect with dog breeds, but yeah. This looks like a Boston Terrier to me, which I freaking adore. It could also be a French Bulldog. That might be a Frenchie. But I love this image. I love the paw on the nose of the lion. I think that's so perfect. Oh, I love this. The hermit. I love this crossed paw thing. My dog does this. Actually, both my dogs do this. I love that she's snuck in the um, Seattle skyline in the background there. I am actually from Washington State, so that little nod to Seattle. She is a Seattle-based artist as well. So our Wheel of Fortune here, very traditional. Love it. And I believe that is a... I'm not going to guess. It's probably another collie with different markings, but I'm not sure. I said I was going to guess, and then I guessed anyways. <laughs> I love this with our little um, our doggo up here, and then we have little black and white. I think these are schnauzers underneath. I love that. I keep. I can't help it. I'm just going to keep guessing doggos. <laughs> doggos breeds. This one looks like a Frenchie again to me. This is so great. The cone of shame is such a perfect example. We get this idea of like, you know, a dog that's just had surgery or been neutered. And there's definitely this idea or spayed. There's this idea of obviously you have that forced time where you have to, you can't jump up on furniture, you can't play. So there's definitely a sacrifice involved. So perfect. The death card. Oh, oh, so tough. This is so tough. Isn't it interesting how, at least for me, um, I can see people like meeting their demise in the tarot, no problem, but you show me a dog and I'm just like, I'm a mess. Tough, tough. Temperance. Oh, I love this with the heart. You get this idea here, at least I get this idea here of a dog who's um, got to sort of do its training. We've got the wings, so we've got an angel happening, but it just, I don't know, there's something about this that just reminds me of a dog who who's a working dog and who's had to had to learn to rein it in, so to speak. The devil. I love this little, like, chihuahua. And interesting here, you have these, um, these look like either cats. No, they're dogs, but they're very, um, bony and ribby. And you get this idea of this dog here is, like, kind of keeping them sort of subjugated, is misusing his power, that sort of thing. Um, but these doggos, of course, could run away from him. He's not that tough. He's probably smaller than them. He's just got them all scared. The tower. We have a burning home here. This actually looks like a, um, almost like a fire watchtower that's burning, which is really interesting. And this dog's had to leap out of it. German Shepherd. Oh, I love this card. The star. And I'm suddenly having a total blank about the type of dog that is. I know it too. 
back in the day when I was in college, I actually taught dog obedience classes for a while and I absolutely loved it. It was one of the fav my favorite things I've ever done. The moon, oh, I love this, looking at their own reflection. The sun, look at that grin, it's the best. Judgment. And the world. Look at that toothy, like, underbite. So good. All right, so those are our majors. Let's take a look at our minors. So we're in the wands. The stick. It's very exciting. It's the stick we're going to chase, right? Makes sense. Oh, I should probably put these in the same pile. Our two of wands. Three of wands. Okay, well, we've got the stick. Now what? Four of Wands. Look at this dox dachshund. There's another dog tarot. If you love dachshunds, do I never say that right. Dosh hound, dosh hounds. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. I always called them dachshunds, but I don't think that's right. The wiener doggos. Um, there is a deck called the Low Rider Tarot, and it's actually landscape oriented, and it's all doc dachshunds. So cute. Here we have our Five of Wands. Who's gonna who's going to emerge the alpha energy happening here? Oops. The six of wands. These other dogs looking up to that one. The seven of wands. Oh yeah. Um, and this reminds me of a herding dog. Uh, either an Australian shepherd or another cattle type herding dog. Uh, which kind of makes sense when you think about the seven of wands and like sort of the one against the many, right? The Eight of Wands, and we have this leaping pupper. Look at this guy. That looks like a long-haired chihuahua, or possibly a papillon, although I think it's a long-haired chihuahua. That's super cute. Our Nine of Wands, and the Ten of Wands. So precarious, but very determined to make it across there. Here's our page. Our Knight. Oh, look at this guy. A queen. And our king. Oh, dogs make me so happy. Ace of Cups. This reminds me of one of those dogs that when they walk up to you, they just like, instead of like jumping on you or like pawing at you, they just like lean against you. This almost reminds me of like a Burmese mountain dog. I don't know that it is. It's a little bit up close, but it's a very big white fluffy dog in my head anyway. The two of cups. Look at these two. Probably litter mates. Love it. The three of cups. All different doggos. They've got their own family. Another German shepherd here in the four of cups. Aw, the five of cups. This one looks like it might be missing an eye. That would make sense, hey? The Six of Cups. This is such a beautiful card. This is one of the ones we got to see kind of in progress and it's so beautiful. This like, just this collie, so gorgeous. Oh, the Eight of Cups. The nine, that's a very contented looking pup. And the ten, I love this like golden retriever with the kitty. So great. Meet in my pile and let's take a look at the page. I love that we have another chihuahua here. The knight. The queen. She does look quite quite regal. She looks like a, um, I want to say like a Springer Spaniel or Cocker, Cocker Spaniel, but she's bigger than that, it looks like. And then our King of Cups. I do think Golden Retrievers are so perfect for the water suit. The Ace of Swords. Look at this guy. The two. Oh my god, it's a Corgi. The three of Swords. Ugh. 
This one is so tough because we see here, we see a figure here and their hearts are tied together and you see this time going, you know, this dog is getting older and it just, oh, that just breaks your heart. The Four of Swords. Again, we get this idea of almost recuperating while, you know, dreaming about being more active or while all his friends are more active, he or she is just stuck here resting. There's a much more restless feeling to this card, like you have to take time out, but it doesn't feel as voluntary necessarily to me for some reason. Here's our five. It's almost like this little dog's got all the toys, and then here's this sad little pup in the background going, I want to play too. Okay, swords aren't toys, but you, but that's what it makes me think of. <clears throat> Here is our six. Yeah, this, it's like this dog is going to help this little duck get across the water. Yeah, it's a duckling. Look, there's the mama duck. There's the baby duck, and you get this idea that this dog is helping shepherd this baby duck over to its mama. There's our seven of swords. Very Rider Waite Smith clone, but the personalities of the dogs really come through, which I really like. I've seen other dog tarots, and they just feel too, um, maybe cartoony in a way for what I'm looking for in a dog tarot, so this one really does scratch that itch. This eight is great. The nine. I love that the dog is having a nightmare about cats. I think that's fantastic. And the ten. Okay, this one is so hard to look at. I get emotional with this one. Because, of course, we have the pupper here and we have the, the mom here. And there's a tear. This one's really sad. Really, really sad. Oof. Okay. Stop, Lisa. I'm going to have a sip. <laughs> Page of Swords. Knight of Swords. Queen of Swords. Uh, Weimariner, I think? Maybe? Maybe not. King of Swords is pretty great. And we're into the Pentacles. Look at that. Lab, I think? Ace of Pentacles. I might be getting some of my Goldens mixed up. Two of Pentacles. Oh. Oh, there's something about this face that's just getting me. Three of Pentacles. Working together to get out. Go for an adventure, it looks like. Mom's not going to be happy. Four of Pentacles. Looks like burying treasure in the dirt out in the yard. The Five of Pentacles. Aww. Them tongues hanging out looking a little thirsty. The Six of Pentacles. The Seven. The Eight of Pentacles. And we get this um, agility training idea here, which is so perfect for perfection or perfecting one's craft. It's like a next level in training, right? The Nine of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles. And let's see, the Page of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles. This looks like a um, this looks like a doggo chewing on the ear of a horse. That's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Peggy and Steve are apparently having a conversation. Of uh, the Queen of Pentacles, cocker spaniel here for sure, and the King of Pentacles. Yes, dear. Oh, okay, I thought she needed me. Uh, King of Pentacles there. Perfect. I love it. Okay, I'm going to zoom us out. We're going to do a little shuffle just to check the card stock and stuff. I haven't shuffled these yet. And then we'll draw a random card and we will take a look at the guidebook. I closed my door and I thought like, something went thump and I wonder if it was one of the dogs being like, you can't shut the door on me. How dare you? Oopsies. Especially when I'm looking at a dog tail. I don't know what I was possibly thinking. All right. And, yeah, these shuffle really, really nicely. No complaints there, and it's a semi-gloss finish. It's like a kind of a classic, um, kind of a classic tarot card finish, so they're not matte. They've got a, a sheen to them, but they're not, like, sh high shine gloss. 
Let's pick one random card here. Oops. Let's not have it be a sad one. Oh, five of pentacles. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, you guys, look. It's an animal shelter. Oh, so the shelter's there to help them, but they're out there um, being hungry and thirsty. I'm sure you could look at that in a number of ways, but that's how I'm going to look at it. <laughs> Let's take a look at the guidebook. So we have here um, some... Oh, these are the names of all the dogs that were in the deck. So this is all of the doggos' names, which is nice. I kind of wish um, there was more, though, in the actual descriptions about the dogs, as I mentioned. Um, it looks like there are just sort of general descriptions, but we'll take a look at the Five of Pentacles and read one together. I don't see any spreads or anything like that. And the miners do seem to have just a couple of sentences per, per card. Um, let's see, swords and pentacles. So, the five. So it says... Fear of disapproval and being ostracized by those we value can leave us feeling out in the cold. It can make the material world a much more dark and dreary place. However, you do not travel this journey alone, despite how it may feel at times. Look for sources that will comfort and heal your spirit, as this will be a time for developing your strength. So that gives you an idea of what the entries read, read like. They don't describe the artwork, and they also don't describe anything about the dogs or their personality or their stories. And I think that, to me, is the, is the real bummer about this deck because I do think it's beautifully done. I just really wish... I feel like there was an opportunity lost in a way, and I would love to just know more, even if that more was fictional. Um, just something to pull us into the story of the animals we see in each card, I think would have been a really cool thing to do. But I mean, it's easy, of course, me not having created the deck to say that from the outside looking in. And I really respect what MJ has done here. But yeah, I would just, I wish for a little bit more. Um, then again, by not giving me that, it's, it's left open to interpretation. And as you heard, I kind of made up some of my own stories as I went through the deck. So there's that too, um, which shouldn't be discounted because that may very well have been her intention that... Um, those using the deck would use their own, um, you know, imagination and and intuitive intuitive feelings to come up with those stories. So that, my friends, is the Wise Dog Tarot. Whoa, my fan went all kinds of all over the place. Let's just, let's make it a little bigger. <laughs> So that is the Wise Dog Tarot. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. If this were to get reprinted, would you scoop it up? Uh, let me know your thoughts. If you have this already and you've done any work with it, I'd love to hear your opinions and your feelings about it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to book a reading, you can do that with me over at SupportiveTarot.com. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.